And we're going to start right up here with news you can use. I had a whole bunch of things that I was going to talk about today regarding the economy, uh, today's jobless reports, which were up unexpectedly, expected to go down. They went up dramatically, actually. Uh, and we'll talk about some of that stuff next week. But today I'm going to tell you about a run in I had with what I call the poop monkey. Now, I've been known for all kinds of phrases and terms. In fact, there was a big thing going on, on Facebook today about uh, knuckle draggers, window lickers, and kangaroos. And that's what I call customers who are just out there to get a price from you. But I had a run in today with the poop monkey. And this will be a, uh, one of the better news you can use because this will show you a trick that I've used over the years to get things sold when other people can't get them sold. Uh, first of all, a real story that happened to us. And I will, I'm going to write it up here on the board so you guys can see it. Uh, sorry, Poop Monkey has to go bye-bye. Uh, we had a house that we sold, uh, and it was, or it's in escrow, and uh, we sold it for 220 k But the buyer was going to use FHA. Now, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, well, I'm not talking about it in a second, I'm talking about it right now. When you get into this kind of market that we're getting into, where you've got uh, higher interest rates, you've got a lot more sellers wanting to sell their property, a lot more choices for buyers, and you got the buyers all sitting on the sidelines thinking they can't afford a house because the interest rates are high. When that happens, the lender of last resort becomes the lender of first choice, and today that's FHA. Now, three, four, five months ago, FHA was, um, and still is in my opinion, the poop monkey. Uh, they were the, the one that you don't want to be around. They were the one that you didn't want to work with. But today, it seems like, especially for the lower priced houses, they're the only game in town. And the reason is because they will take the lower credit. Some people who have lower credit scores are willing to risk a higher payment or they can afford a higher payment um, you know, with higher interest rates because they, they don't need as good of a credit score to get a loan with FHA. FHA used to take people at 500 credit scores. I don't know what the minimum is today, but the dollars are up, the credit scores are down, and people can get an FHA loan. And so a lot of times over the last three, four, five years, most of us who are selling houses would reject loans from like VA or FHA because they were problematic. They ask for everything to be perfect. Um, you know, they've got all of this detailed things that everybody else would pass on. The regular lenders would say, we don't need an appraisal. We don't need to make sure everything's in great shape. We don't need to make sure the water heater is brand new, all of this stuff. FHA is going to require all that. Check it off, check, check, check. But FHA has their own rules. And there is a way to beat FHA at their own game, and it's to know how they play. So that leads me to today's story. What happened was we sold this house for 220 k Now, FHA has a two appraisal deal. And so they came in, they did two appraisals. One came in at 223, and one came in at 212. Okay, so appraisal one. Number one, number two. The rule says if you have an appraisal, uh, if the two appraisals are separated by more than 5%, then you've got to use the lower number. The, the seller must change their sales price. Now remember, our sales price was 220, not 223, not 212. It was 220. Two, three months ago, that would have been it no matter what. There's no negotiation. It's I don't care what your appraisal is. I don't care who your lender is. you know. But we took this loan knowing that it was over what we were asking. We were only asking one ninety nine five. So we got 20,000, 10% over market. Uh, and these are what the two appraisals came in for, 223, 212. The rule says if these two appraisals are separated by more than 5%, plus 5%, that you've got to go with the lower number. In other words, we'd have to drop our price, right? So these are the, and so we got these back and they said, you're going to have to sell your house for 212 because, uh, and here's our rules, blah, blah, blah. Well, somebody must not be using a calculator that goes out two places because uh, the difference here, this is, this comes out to 95, let's do the exact math. 5% uh, actually would be 211,850. 211,850. So these numbers are separated by less than 5%, not more than 5%. So 
So we called their, their stuff. We called their shiz on them. And we said, listen, this is not f over 5% separation between high and low. This is in fact, you know, 4.9% or something like that. It's, it's sub 5%. You can't require us to go to the lower price. In fact, per your rules, we can raise the price to 223. And they, the, the lender, the loan officer said, no, uh, we're, we're making you do this. Well, this is a federal deal. This is not the state that we're doing business in. This is a federal rule. So we called poop monkey on them. And we said, listen, you, you got to stick by your rules. These are the federal governed rules. And if you can't do the math, we've done it for you. The number that would represent 5% be $211,850. This was above that. So in other words, the separation between here and here, which is 5%, this 212 was in between. So we throw out the 212. We can charge 223. We're willing to close for 220. And they're like, no, no, you got to do 212,000. We're like, you know, forget that. We're not doing it. So we called the boss. And then we called their other boss. And I'll let you know how this thing goes out by next week, but they are trying to rewrite the rules and they're trying to force the market down. Uh, we're not gonna let that happen. We're gonna stay on this one. If I have to, we'll bump this seller, I mean, this buyer, and we'll go sell it to somebody else just for principle. And these guys will be out. Uh, but all of the other contingencies have been done, waived, everything, the inspection was perfect. Everything was fine. Uh, and this is a case of the government sticking their nose where it shouldn't be and literally trying to force a change in the marketplace. We're not going to stand for it. So those of you who are watching this down the road on YouTube channel, uh, make sure that you check the math because evidently the guys who write FHA loans don't have two places in their calculator to know. They just round up and they say it's over 5%. We're not doing that. So Here's the game plan going forward. Uh, what you guys could do, um, so hopefully that's that's clear and I can answer questions if, if we don't understand that. But the game plan going forward uh, on these types of projects, uh, if you've got to use FHA, you can do something and we can play their own game with them. They have to use comps that, and the old comps go back six months. So in the last six months, what, what have we had happen? Prices have been high, all time high. And we have few sales. So when you have high prices and few sales, they have to use what's there and what's available. And if they can't find it in the right geographic area, they have to go further and further out. So it allows you to sell a house, an FHA loan right now, the, the plus side is it will allow you to sell a house at higher than the market is today. So that's what we, we did. Uh, you, if you guys are selling a house, make sure you tell your realtor, listen, you think it's worth 200,000? I want you to mark it up 10% because you may have to give some of that back. You may end up having one of these kind of things that we just had happen, happen where uh, FHA tries to rewrite their rules. Um, and, but more than likely, you're gonna get a comp that's gonna come in okay. You're gonna be all right on this deal. So try and get a non-FHA loan. And if that doesn't work, what you can do is just raise your price at the beginning and charge more because the buyers out there who use FHA loans, they're like the buy here, pay here car people. They don't care about what the price is. They care about how much they got to put down, what's their monthly payment going to be. And you can fix that by raising, you can take some of these other problems you can run into with an FHA loan by charging more. So definitely mark it up beyond what your realtor may say. You're going to have to do your own research, find those top comps and go at those top comps. They're allowed to actually go above those top comps. They may not. So go literally right to the top comp. Doesn't mean you're going to get all of that. You know, they may ask for a seller concession in the loan, 6% buyer, seller pay down, that kind of thing. Now, that's, uh, that, that's one trick. They've got to use comps based on the past, and you can sell for over the market price. That compensates you for some of the issues. The bigger issue, though, is you've got a lot of buyers out there who don't want to get into the game and buy property right now. 
because they think they're priced out. It is a mass hysteria created by the news media and all these things that you see out there saying, you know, prices uh, are ridiculously high. They're not they're coming down and interest rates are so expensive, nobody can afford it. Nobody does the math and actually checks to make sure if that's correct. But one of the things you can do, um, and I would definitely look at this going forward, is something that I did about 15 years ago. Actually, it was probably in 2002, so it'd be 20 years ago. And then I did it again about seven or eight years ago. And I ran it by a bunch of lenders again, this go round, and they were all, most of these guys weren't around then. And so they're like, that's brilliant, but we don't know if it'll work. We'll check. Everybody who's come back said, yeah, there's no reason you can't do that. So uh, for lack of a better term, we'll call this the Jeffro maneuver. And this thing goes like this. You can sell a house and you can buy down your buyer's points. You can buy down your buyer's interest rate with a one-time payment to the lender. So the, the way we did this a few years ago, one of the first ones I did um, looked like this. The house was $300,000 is what we wanted for it. The market had dropped to 270. It dropped 10%. We see that right now. We see that kind of market all around right now. Um, and But we didn't want to to start here because we knew most of the market was FHA. We want to start up here. <clears throat> so what we did is we said, we'll sell it at 300 and then we'll put $10,000 directly to your lender. We'll give $10,000 of that directly from your lender to buy down the points. They were coming in with like a six, six and a half percent loan. They were like complaining. They had to have a cheaper price because of the expensive loan. What we said is, you know what? How about we sell this with a 4% loan on it so your payments will be low? Now, what that does is that, once again, it drops their payments. It allows you to get more. We had comp support at this number, uh, even though the market was at this number. This is exactly what we got going today. You've got comp support, higher number. You've got realistic market numbers, lower. Uh, we were able to sell this. They, they accepted that. And so we got cross off all this stuff. We got 290K and we got the buyer a 4% loan at that time. And they were tickled to death. Took it one step further. That was probably the first one that we did. We took it a step further and we instructed our real estate agent to list our properties on the market by, by saying that this loan, uh, this house will sell with our loan a 4% interest, 4% fixed rate loans. So we were able to be at the top of the chart and every freaking real estate agent in the area that we were selling in was pumping to sell our house because our house was the smoking hot. First thing that anybody saw, now this was before all these things today where you can look up these houses online, see what they are. So we even have a greater opportunity to sway the masses today. But I think this is gonna be the thing that will really spur this market back on if we can make this a national trend um, and, and lenders may or may not like it, it doesn't matter. It's legal at this point in time. It also allows you to bump the FHA. You can tell people, listen, we've got this, this house comes with its own loan. It's 4% fixed rate loan. We're not taking FHA loans. You've got to use our lender. Part of the way you can get some of that $10,000 you're paying back is you can get that lender to give you a referral fee. I don't know the legalities. That's a state by state thing. Back then, we could take referral fees. Uh, you may need to be licensed today. I'm just disclosing today. I don't know what the rules are, but I think at one point we got like half of that uh, five to ten thousand dollars back uh, directly from the lender. So we we created a super hot product, one that was a brand new house, rehabbed house. It came with financing. Not only that, the financing was the best one in the market. So instead of talking like everybody else does about we got the best house around, it's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. We came with, we got the best loan around. It's the cheapest. It's a fixed rate loan. Um, no teasers, no nothing. It's 4% fixed for 30 years and uh, it comes with the house. So all you got to do is qualify for loan. You don't have to worry. And it has the same qualifications as FHA standards. So because money has been paid down, it allows the credit to be accepted for that loan to be a lower credit score, credit worthy. I'm not even sure how they do that, but 
it allowed us to basically take somebody who, who could have got a loan at 6% for 520 score and put, put that same person who had maybe on a private, that had to be a 600. It allowed somebody who had maybe a 560, 580 to be able to get that same loan that a 520 FHA credit score person would have got or a 600 uh, regular conventional purchaser would have got. So it's the best of both worlds. And until the government comes up with some way to shut this down, and I don't, I don't know why they would, because to me, this is just creative finance. This is what you call transactional, we call transactional engineering. This is creative finance 101. Uh, keep in mind the Jeff Rowe maneuver, <laughs> I'm name it myself, because uh, nobody else seems to want to pay attention to it. But I think this could be something that could really make a big difference. Uh, going forward, and I think you guys can uh, really do well on the on the rehab side of the business. Normally, we'd have you stay away from the rehab thing, uh, but today that is what sells because of all of these shows that have been going on the last fifteen years. Flip this house, flip or flop. All of, you know, there's hundreds of these things out there on all these channels, and that's all that these buyers, first time home buyers and and move up home buyers have ever seen. That's all they've ever looked at is uh, brand new, fixed up, beautiful houses. So this gives you guys a chance to buy cheap uh, rehab property. There's lots of lenders out there to, to finance rehabs. Um, if, if you guys can't uh, find one and you got a great deal, come to me directly. We'll see what we can do to help you uh, because this is the game and this is transactional engineering. You, know, you have to shift depending on what happens out there in the economy, what's happening in the marketplace. This is the way to go right now. You do that loan buy down, you'll have the hottest thing since sliced bread, canned beer, toothpaste in a tube, et cetera. So try that. All right, that's news you can use for today. Sorry, it was a lot longer than normal, but we had a lot of stuff to talk about. And uh, let's go ahead and go switch over to our regular call and get with our, who, we got anybody with their hands up here? Miss Ashley? Yet. Okay. Anybody have any questions regarding that? how that works, what we've done. Did I make it clear, hopefully, or clear? It's a long-term topic we have to talk about, but um, okay, Michelle says that was great. Thanks, Jeff, you're welcome. Hopefully that uh, that makes sense. I'm telling you guys, this is, this is where the money is uh, right now. And don't be afraid, you know, if somebody tells you, like we were told by this uh, lender for FHA, that this is, you know, we're gonna drop that price. No, you're not because uh, you got to follow your own rules too. You can't just arbitrarily get involved. Even if you're the federal government, if you get involved in our contract, uh, you've, what's, you've created what's called tortious interference with our legal agreement between us and the buyer. Um, and we will come after you for that. Now, you know, who wins coming after the federal government? Nobody that I've heard of, but you can. Um, and at least the threat with these lower level bureaucrats who run these things is enough to get them to think about postponing lunch for a few minutes and uh, better read their rule book instead. Uh, all right, 